Good evening. Welcome to Tawi on Blog Talk Radio. This is Raul Nefer Amen, your host for this segment of Tawi on Blog Talk. How are we doing? I'm doing fine. I hope that you are doing well as well. Um, we're back to some nice weather here in New York, 55 degrees after some bitter cold in December and January and lots of snow. Uh, but everything is all right. Snow, cold, heat, it's all the same, isn't it? As we say in the saving work, bring on the challenges because we are divine men and divine women. We are at peace and joyful about whatever life brings our way. Welcome to this section on Baz. Okay, we are speaking about the Osirian Initiation 2011. Okay, as well as we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, Bazi um, system, which we're going to be dealing with tomorrow. <clears throat> so while we are, we have quite a lot of people who confirm for the show, and we're just going to wait a few minutes before we get started, okay, give them a chance to <clears throat> sign on so they don't miss anything very important. I hope that you all have your um, materials together, uh, you know, many of you did the initiation last year, your serving initiation, and I've received some uh, email feedback from some of you. Uh, most of you I did not hear from. And um, so that we have, you know, some uh, very, very, very important things to discuss this evening. So if you prepared your questions, you know, about Medulitary Volume 4, if you, you know, don't have the book handy, you might want to run and grab it so that you can maybe thumb through it and review some of the questions that you may have about initiation, uh, because we're about to take it to another level for those of you who did it last year. And uh, of course, you know, for those of you doing it for the first time this year, we will be doing it. Um, <clears throat> we'll have two different courses, one for people who are starting this year, and one for people who did it last year. <clears throat> so, let us begin by um, reviewing for those of you who are, you know, veterans of the initiation from last year, and um, giving some introductory material to people who are new to this initiation. First of all, <clears throat> Osirian initiation. Okay, let's first start with the word initiation. You know, which calls to mind lots of different things to different people. You know, uh, people approach initiations in different ways. Um, you know, it could be a rites of passage, it could be, you know, a revelation of certain, you know, secrets that a society holds. It could be spiritual training of some kind. And uh, so there are all kinds of, you know, applications of the concept of initiation. So it may not be clear to you what we mean by initiation. Uh, the Osirian initiation is nothing more than a specific approach that the ancient Egyptians used to spiritually train, okay, those people who had uh, the means, you know, to go through extensive spiritual training. And when we look at ancient Egypt's great accomplishment, Okay, because many of us look at the pyramids and the architecture and the mathematics and the astronomy and, uh, you know, the medicine, the 
writing systems. I mean, ancient Egypt was a phenomenally creative and productive society thousands of years ahead of everybody else. we got to keep that in mind. There are many cultures that like to backdate their accomplishments. You know, they you find, for example, that you know, the, the, the Buddhist canons, the writings of Buddhism, goes back to about 600 B.C. The Old Testament of the Bible goes back to around the same time, between 600 B.C. and, you know, 300 B.C. And, you know, most of these nations, you know, did not, you know, were not highly civilized or advanced until some two to 3,000 years after Egypt. As a matter of fact, when we do the right kind of historical, you know, research, we find that a lot of the Egyptian, you know, uh, accomplishments were, you know, exported to many parts of the world, to Asia, to, you know, Europe. And the general name was Sesostris that took the Egyptian culture all the way to China into, you know, um, you know, all the way up to the Slavonic areas, you know, that, you know, Czechoslovakia and Bulgaria and, you know, that far north. And, of course, Greece, we know that Solon and, you know, Plato and, you know, many of the great Greek, you know, philosophers and mathematicians and science, Archimedes, and they all studied in Egypt, you see. Uh, or, and or, you know, they had access to the libraries, which, you know, which, you know, mostly were translations of Egyptian, you know, textbooks and, you know, research material and mathematics and all of these subjects. So what I want to say to you is that it was a spiritual initiation system of ancient Egypt that is what was responsible for, you know, the uh, great accomplishments meaning that, you know, one of the results of initiation is the ability to use your mind to its highest level. You see that? It, it protects the integrity of the mind and allows the mind to manifest its greatest potential. It improves health. It improves creativity. It improves physical, you know, vitality and abilities. So, you know, because if somebody's going to say to you they're going to initiate you, you need to ask them, well, what's in it for me? What am I going to get out of initiation? You know, you just don't want to, you know, acquire some information so that you can brag about what you know and show off your knowledge. That's not enough. And if you're going to spend, you know, uh, a year or two or three in an initiation program, or and actually your entire life, because there are levels and layers and layers and layers of initiation, you want to know that it's going to benefit you. And what that benefit is, is that, you know, after, if you master the teachings of initiation after a year or two or three, you'll find that your IQ would, will, you know, expand. You know, you will be off the chart. You know, you'll be thinking ex totally out of the box. You know, what I'm saying is that there will be no IQ, you know, um, test that could actually, you know, test your ability because you'll be so far ahead of the people who are thinking with inside the box to create an IQ test. You know, you'll you answer all the questions well and turn around and give them a test and flunk them. You see that? But that's what we're looking at in Egypt. You know, a man once came up to me in the uh, 70s, early 70s, and asked me, had I been to Egypt because I was writing books on this, the, the topic all the way back, my first book was The Realization of Netanyahu, written in 1974, you know, which was a big hit among, you know, um, people who were into Kabbalah and, you know, Egyptology and things of that nature. And he asked me, had you been to Egypt? I said, no, I don't need to go to Egypt because I have the teachings here, right here in my mind, in my heart. And that's the important thing. Uh, you can go and go, oh, ah, at the pyramids and all the great things in museums and not benefit from the Egyptian experience unless 
and until you go through the ancient Egyptian initiation system. And this is what I want to share with you uh, this evening. Of course, the the way of going through the Osirian initiation is the subject of my book that came out last year, Bedulature, Volume 4. And the other preceding volumes, along with um, the 11 Laws of God and the Tree of Life Meditation System, these are all auxiliary books with auxiliary scales and theoretical background and practical materials, you know, to help take you through the initiation process. You see that? Now, when we go into the Egyptian, you know, literature, we find once we're able to really navigate through their way of thinking and their, their way of exposition and presentations, we find that there are two supreme spiritual principles, Osir and Ra. There were two main spiritual schools, the Osirian school and the Ra school. I want for you to really focus on that. Because, you see, there are two fundamental aspects of being. You see? Uh, one is the self, which is consciousness, will. And the other aspect of, of, of one's being is energy matter or spirit. So the, in ancient Egypt, there are these, this huge set of teachings that, you know, relate to the self, which is consciousness will, which has no energy and matter inside of it. And that's one of the mysteries of mysteries. How can something be and yet be devoid of energy and matter? And, of course, the concept of the void appears in many, many, you know, spiritual teachings, but it's not clarified. The Chinese call the void the Wu Ji, or that which is empty of energy and matter. And that is even higher than Tai Chi, achieving Wu Ji. You see that? Because uh, Tai Chi is the harmony and balance of the energy and matter within you, whereas Wu Ji corresponds to the self, consciousness, which is the void of energy and matter. So initiation, part of consciousness will, the self, your identity, is the Osirian tradition in Egypt, ancient Egypt, which you call Kamet, okay? And the spiritual initiation, the meaning the teachings about the spirit, you know, meaning the, the secrets of energy and matter, you see, the life force and your spirit and the things that make up your spirit. You see, it has to do with the Ra tradition. And not understanding these two things, that there were two major schools, you know, has kept a lot of people from understanding and mastering, you know, the ancient Egyptian religion, spiritual system, and initiation. Uh, if any of you had an opportunity of reading... Um, Sir Arthur Avalon wrote several books on Kundalini Yoga, you know. Um, he has a book called The Great Liberation. You, all, you know, uh, I have a copy of my bookshelf, a Dover, you know, publication, you know. Um, he also wrote a book about the serpent power. Those are phenomenal reference books. You know, the, the, the best, one of the, you know, some of the best, you know, um, you know, our references for students who want to really understand Kundalini Yoga and, and the Hindu esoteric system uh, far superior to what a lots of other people, you know, who study with some guru here in America, whatever. I don't want to put anybody down, but this is the truth. When you, if you take time to buy the Great Liberation and Sir Avalon's, you know, um, Serpent Power. You know, you will see what I'm talking about. But in the Great Liberation, you know, Sir Arthur Avalon, I believe his other name is, uh, you know, uh, it goes by another name as well. But you will see that in his book, he also says that in India there were two basic traditions, the Brahmic tradition and the Shakti. So 
also they had the Brahmins. So when I when I say the Brahmin, I don't mean the the the, the, the Brahma caste, the caste of Brahmins, but you know the it was the approach the you see dealing with the self, because Brahma has to do with the the consciousness will of the Creator, whereas Shakta is the power, the Ra. So we find that even once we understand the Hindu esoteric tradition, there are two major streams. Brahmin or Brahma, the, the traditional Brahma, you know, those who follow the, the, the short, safe path. And then there's a path of Shakta, those who follow the long, dangerous path because it's a path of power, you see. And, and it's a reflection of the same thing that we have in ancient Egypt, the Osirian tradition and the Ra tradition. And, you know, and it's very interesting that what survives of ancient Egyptian spiritual teachings in the open is the Osirian tradition, whereas the Ra tradition is hidden in the thickest symbolism in books like the, Shed, the Seshem Duat, you know, um, or the Book of Gates. You see, and by the way, the, the, all of those books, you know, pre, they, they predate, the, you know, the Bible, the, the, the Buddhist books, you know, and the, 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 um, the Lao Tzu, the Tao's, you know, books, you know, by thousands of years, you know, because it's important to date antiquity to know, you know, who learned from who, because in the transmission there's a lot of, distortion and losses and mistranslations and things of that nature. And it's important for you to keep the date of, you know, who was doing what at one time because then you will understand, you know, okay, this material here is not original. It was received from these other people over here so that you can correct the mistakes in the transmission. It's very important. <clears throat> We're talking about your spirit. We're talking about your life. You want to get information accurate. I'm not trying to play the devil's advocate or put anybody down or whatever. You know, I just want you to understand that there are a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistranslations, a lot of mistransmission, and many people think that spirituality is hard, not understanding that the people who are presenting the information are working with corrupt information. <laughs> If if you went to school and the teachers, you know, learned that 2 plus 2 is 5, and you are in the field now trying to apply that mathematical knowledge, you're going to say, this is very hard, you know, I keep getting wrong results, or I'm not getting results I'm looking for, not knowing that the fundamental system has some built-in glitches in it. So that's what I'm talking about here, folks. So before we, <clears throat> we got to honest, you know, because... You have to understand a little bit of the, you know, the fundamentals of the Egyptian spirituality and Egyptian religion, because this is what the Egyptian is about, the Egyptian religion, the Egyptian spiritual, spiritual system. The biggest mistake that you will make is studying, reading these people who say that the Egyptians worship many gods, okay? First of all, the Egyptians did not worship at all, the never. It was. It's, it's not a religion of worship. It's not a religion of worshiping anything. Yes. In other words, in the Western world, there's a concept that religion is about worship. You see that? You know. Uh, uh, you know. You you are adoring some divine being, and you know beseeching some divine being to help you out. So you know. So you worship that divine being. That is a, to a concept that is totally foreign to the Egyptian mentality. You see that? The foundation of the Egyptian system is that man is a divine being, not a human being. The, the, the human nature of man is something that was invented somewhere around 6300 B.C., somewhere around that time. You see that? In the ancient Egyptian system, man is a divine being. Man is the vehicle of the supreme being in the world. The supreme being creates the world because before, there's a book called the, the Book of Knowing the Transformations of Ra and of Overthrowing Opep, which is the evil. 
that book lays down the the philosophy and the entire reasons for creation from the Egyptian point of view. And you see, before creation, God is one without a second. You know, this this infinite eternal expanse of energy and matter and, and consciousness will without any kind of, you know, limitations. So if there's only one consciousness in the world and at the beginning one undifferentiated energy and matter, you know, uh, the supreme being, Nether, cannot have, well, it, it never is a word for the supreme being at that level, meaning the, the, the Lord of all you know, cannot have any experience because there's nobody else. It's just simply one. When we understand monotheism, we, we understand supreme being, you know, before the creation has no one to talk to, no one to interact with. You understand that? You know, supreme being is in a pickle. It has this great ability to create any and everything and has nobody to talk to. <laughs> because, you see, you know, it is eternal, infinite, undifferentiated, you know, there's no division. Otherwise, there will be two supreme beings. There will be two entities. You see that? So let's understand monotheism at its root. So the supreme being creates the world within itself and then enters the world to experience life. You see that? And the vehicle that it chooses to experience life as the creator is man. You see, the supreme being comes into this world to experience its creation, to experience life, to have a good time, to have fun. You see that? To create on different, you know, once more again, in, inside the world. You see that? Hmm? But it cannot choose a dog or a cat or a horse or a snake to be its v v vessel of manifestation in the world. It chooses man. That's why the, you know, the... Hebrew Bible, the, the, the Old Testament in Genesis 1 says, and God said, let us make man in our own likeness and image. You see, man is made in the likeness and image of God, meaning a divine being. You see, what? To serve as the vessel of God. God is going to come into the world through the man, you know, and the woman who has perfected his and her spirit. That's what we have to understand. And that is your reason for being on earth. You see, whatever you think you're here on earth for, to, to, to be married to Mary or John, or to be, you know, a lawyer or a singer or a rap artist, whatever you think you are on here, those are just simply stepping uh, stones and training grounds to your real career, your real destiny, which is to be a God man, to be a God woman. You see that? And the Osirian initiation system... Okay, along with the Ra initiation system, which we'll introduce later on at some time, you see, you know, are the paths to you developing your, you know, divinity. You see that? So that puts the Osirian, the, the word, the title, Osirian initiation in perspective. It's a, you know, a step-by-step, -step, you know, uh, educational process. Okay, so the religion of Egypt was not one of worshipping a divinity, but cultivating your divinity. Okay? Because if you are living <laughs> not as a divine being, you're living in the world as a human being. The word human means earthly man, and the earthly man is controlled by the animal propensities within him. You see that? Okay? So if you're not living with the divine being, you're living by the animal and the, the lower mind, the human mind. You know, the, 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 the definition of being human, okay, includes vulnerability to emotions and weaknesses and, you know, and we excuse everything that we do bad to each other because we're human. We can help it. We can do but so much because we're human. You know, a minister, you know, goes out and he's caught in the red light district you know, minister gets out on the pulpit and puts down homosexuality, then we find him, you know, with men in bed, you know, um, I'm not knocking, you know, homosexuality, just in the same people who, you know, who preach against these things, okay, but then they go out and do it, and then uh, the congregation, you know, excuses him and says, well, he was only, it was only human, you see that? A minister goes out and they find out that he's in bed with the women in his congregation and then the congregation says, well, he's only human. So we use the human to excuse everything that we do wrong, everything that goes wrong in life. You see that? 
And the thing is that the ancients in ancient Egypt and the real spiritual traditions of India and, and Buddhism and Sufism and Taoism, you know, um, either project the image of a man that is beyond the human, okay, most of them fall short of saying that man is the likeness of God, but the Egyptians went and said it, the Jews said it, but then they contradicted in many passages in the book, and then the Christians came and contradicted even further by saying that man is born in sin and cannot escape that unless he worships some a divine entity and stuff like that. But the Egyptian system was a step-by-step -step cultivation of your spirit. You see that? Okay? And my books, Medunity Volume 1, 2, 3, and now 4, and my art, 11 Laws of God, okay, gives you, you know, a, you know the, the insight into the 11 divisions of your spirit, which the Egyptians call the Pautnateru, you see? And later on, the Hebrews, we know that the Jews, you know, were at some time, at some time in history in Egypt, okay? We know that Moses, you know, they say he was an Egyptian royalty, and his brother Aaron was a priest. As a matter of fact, all the priesthood in, in Israel, okay, were Egyptians or from that Egyptian line. You see that, okay? And uh, this is something that's very important for you to understand, that the book of Deuteronomy, you know, is a priesthood book, and, and the whole tradition of the priestly caste in ancient, you know, uh, Israel, you know, were descendants of the Egyptians. They were part of that Egyptian lineage. So I just want you to understand that's where the whole thing of the tree of life came from. The tree of life is a partner title, but the tree of life is really a diagram that identifies the 11 major parts of man's spirit. You see that? Okay? And, and once you understand each of those 11 parts of the spirit, we call it neteru. Okay? The Hebrew call it spheres of the tree of life. We call it 11 neteru or the part neteru. You see, we don't call it spheres. We call them neteru. Neter. You see and so on, and um, so, but each one of them has a vast amount of information, you see, and most important is that each one contains a law, 11 laws, each one contains a law that controls now, okay, the um, energy matter within, the raw force, the spirit, you see. Because the spirit, you, you experience your spirit as a desire for peace, a desire for union with others, a desire for power, a desire, you know, for order, a desire for justice, you know, a desire for pleasure, a desire, you know, for, you know, uh, technological, you know, uh, order so you can control your environment. You see that? A desire for the ability to change and a desire for, you know, um, you know, uh, stability and survival on earth and things like that. So there are these major desires which are in, in life which are expressions of the spirit. You see that? Okay? But they can only be satisfied by 11 laws. Not knowing the laws, we try to satisfy these desires for by achieving uh, physical things. You know, we think that we're going to achieve happiness. This is, you know, spirit has a desire for happiness, which is peace and joy, you know, always, to be peaceful and joyful. Not understanding that we have the capacity to be peaceful and joyful, whether we have something or we don't have something, we think that the peace and joy is going to be achieved by getting something or getting somebody. So that when we get that something and we lose it, we're unhappy. You see that, or we might steal and cheat and kill to get it. And you see, so it's, it, it is this failure to understand how to satisfy these powerful urges, these spiritual urges within us, that is creating all the evils and wrongs in people's lives and in society, and creating the wars, and the different holocausts and things of that nature. 
So the initiation then is a step-by-step -step process by which we learn each law and apply it to the 11 parts of our spirit. And once that goal is accomplished, it might take you a year or two or three, okay? How long it takes you to accomplish this depends on where you are when you start and how determined you are to do the work. You know, we will give you all the guidance that you, you know, that you uh, will need. Okay, this is some, we just begun to, to share this initiation material with the public last year, but that's what we've been doing in Osada Set for the past, you know, 37 and a half years. Okay, that is what enabled the Osada Set Society to go from a humble beginnings in Harlem, New York City, and now we're in over 30 cities around the world. You see, because people have been applying these teachings to their lives, and they have seen improvement in family and health, in their jobs, in their livelihoods, in their mental abilities, their talents, their skills, and things of that nature. So, um, you know, before I say more, okay, I will go into some details about the initiation process or whatever. I would like, first of all, to open up the phones to some of you. I see that there are a lot of you on this call, so we're going to have a lively discussion this evening. I want to thank all of you for coming aboard. You know, uh, if you called in and you would like to ask a question or maybe give us a, a brief testimonial of your experience, initiation experience of last year, because many of you sent me emails telling me about the, the changes that took place in your life. Okay, some were very radical and some were, were spectacular. Okay, and some of you may also be were stumped. You know, you, you know, what did I do wrong? So you get a chance to ask questions, to share your testimonials. But if you're going to share testimon testimonials, please keep it brief, so that because we have lots of people, you know, on this call tonight, that we want to give as many people as possible. An opportunity. Once more again, this is Ra Hong Nefer Amen on Tawi at blogtalkradio.com. So if you want to ask a question, press 1 on your keypad so that we will know that you are interested in talking to us. And if you are just listening over your computer and would like to ask a question, in front of your monitor, there should be, okay, um, you know, um, a number, guest call in number, which is 1-646-478-3664. So let's go to the board. We have somebody calling in from Skype, okay? All right. Caller, you're on the air. Okay, I have somebody calling in from Skype. I'm getting a one 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 number. Okay. All right. So, that person stepped away. So let's close that mic down. Let's see if there's any more people. Don't forget to press one if you're interested in making a comment or asking a question. Okay. We don't see anybody yet that that wants to talk. You are formulating your questions. That's good. Uh, don't forget that if you wait too late to ask your questions, you may not get a chance because once we get rolling with questions, you know, uh, there are going to be quite a lot of, you know, questions coming in. Okay, we have 410-599. You're on the air. Oh, okay, great. Hi. Peace. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Pat. <laughs> My name, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Oh, excellent. Okay. First and foremost, I want to thank you uh, for, uh, I would just say, I guess, compiling the uh, compositions that you've been uh, writing over the years. Volume 1 was introduced to me when I was in high school by my father, and the journey has been extremely interesting, and it's only going to get more interesting with the initiation that I, I plan to begin in 
February, uh, I mean, on the 21st of this month. That's so, um, <laughs> but I had a question uh, that was related to child rearing or cultivating um, youth. And I wanted to know, as a mother who is uh, working at implementing the Asarian um, conceptual framework or the, the meta netta I want to kind of somehow incorporate that in uh, my son's life. He's two years old. He's almost two years old. I want to get an idea of what was the um, ancient comedic philosophy or conceptual framework for rearing children. What was, the, what was that position? Okay. Excellent <laughs> question. Uh, you know, let's start with what you said earlier. You said that you were introduced to Manunachev Volume 1 when you were in high school. Yes. How old were you then? I was 16. Now I'm 28. 16. Okay, you mm -hmm. see that. Now, I'm pretty sure that you know that lots of people might think that that was pretty young for Manunachev Volume 1, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. So, but you, you, you hung in there, right? You hung in there, and you've been at it now, what, for 12 years, you said, right? Yes. Phenomenal. You know, yes, uh, spirituality is something that we introduce to our children even before they're born. Excellent. In other words, if you are living, you know, let's say you live in the initiation, right, you know, uh, then uh, that, that means that you're going through life being peaceful and joyful to the challenge instead of worrying and grieving and being all emotion and so on, right? Mm -hmm. Which means that if you're pregnant and you are peaceful and joyful as opposed to angry and f afraid, you are not hurting your fetus. Okay. You and there's this understanding, This some people want to call it a theory, and I don't know if anybody's proven it, but there's this understanding in ancient times across many cultures that a person's emotional state of mind, you know, and their beliefs are, are somehow transmitted to the fetus. Okay. You see that? Okay. Yes. Okay. And the Chinese, and we're going to talk tomorrow when we, talk, when we deal with Bazi astrology, we're going to talk a lot about that too, you know, because, you know, um, you know, throughout the womb, you know, what our, our mental states and lifestyles affect the children at different stages, gestation stage, stages. Mm -hmm. Again, the Chinese have a lot of beautiful information about that. But in answer to your question, let's take, for example, you know, children, it's, it's normal and natural for children, let's say, to, to get angry, to be afraid, you understand? Okay, yes. And part of the, the our main initiation, for example, focuses on, on being peaceful instead of being emotional. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the, the children are angry, they're afraid and stuff like that because... Uh, start because they're controlled by that emotional part of being. Mm -hmm. But what reinforces it and entrenches it is examples from the parents. Okay. okay. So if they see parents who are not getting angry, who are not getting upset, who are not, you know, expressing their fear, you know, and if they hear the parents speaking, you know, like, oh, man, you know, I'm having a rough, you know, some rough challenges here, but I, I, I say twenty two, here, I give thanks to God because I'm a divine being, you know what I'm saying? As opposed to, man, why am I going through this? Why me? You see that? So right. because children pick up our thought patterns, you know, from our speech, how we, you know, what we say and how we say it in our body language and challenging situations, our children learn that. Mm -hmm. And that's the way you're going to, you know, share that and pass it on to the young ones. You know, you can't put them in the class and lecture to them. You know, hey, Johnny, Ron Everman has a blog talk, radio show tomorrow. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to do that. You see that. But right. so how you carry yourself. And you know how children, how brutal they are, right? Mommy, didn't mm -hmm. you say we don't do that? How come you're doing it? <laughs> right. So, yes, in other words, make sure that you are the proper example. Exactly. You know? And, you know, and try to get work with other people to, to have your own schools. So that the teachers, that the children spend a lot of time mm -hmm. in the meeting mm -hmm. one that day, with teachers, you know, and they're picking up those habits that, that is initiating them into the human. Exactly. <laughs> you know, in a side of set, we work very hard. We have our own school. You know, it's almost like 36 years old. And where, where is that school? Is that in New York? Yeah, in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Camden Preparatory Institute. You see? So that our, you know, many of our children, you know, that's all the – early school that they had. So they spent the whole day, you mm -hmm. know, around peaceful, you know, um, 
joyful, well, sometimes not very joyful, but trying to be joyful teachers. <laughs> right. You know what I'm talking about, but that's where we, you know, we raise children in this consciousness and become very healthy, their, their minds, because emotions damage intellect, right. creativity, productivity, you know, health. So that's how we Is safeguard it? the life of our children and really prepare them for a life of greatness. Is it ever too early to start practice meditation with uh, a child? Oh, yeah, because, you know, meditation, um, number one, you know, depends on breathing a certain way. Yes. And if you don't do it accurately, it could damage your health. You understand that? Okay. Okay. Um, and also, when you meditate, you become psychically open. And if you're never discriminating, if you're not have, if not yet at the age of discrimination, right? Oh, I mean, children, that children, makes sense. children are already open. Why open them even? Yeah. Children, they're sponges already. They're already meditators. They spend their whole life meditating. That is what I felt. That is exactly what I felt. Thank you so much. That, Thank that you. makes perfect sense. <laughs> Thank you. Keep okay. on. Keep on with it. Very good. Okay, you said I didn't think of covering that subject. I'm very glad the young lady opened that line of discussion up. I learned something just listening to what it was talking to me. <laughs> three three zero, you're on the air. Yes, three three zero seven eight, how you doing? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. How you doing? Yes, I'm doing fine. How about yourself? I'm fine, thank you. Yes, um, you was you were uh, speaking about um, God, man, God, woman. Yes, sir. And you said that uh, basically that we're, we're gods in a, in, in, in a human body. We are divine beings, yes. We are divine beings, right, in a human body. We, we start off our life, right, Yes. With a, with a human mindset. Yes. You see that? Controlled by the emotional sense, which is the animal within us. Yes. But that's not our identity. We're supposed to transcend that. You see that? Oh, okay. We're supposed to replace that human image that the lower part of our being has given us and replace it with a divine self-image. But I'm not the one who said that. Are, are, are you, you read the Old Testament? No, no, I don't. You, well, but you know people who do, right? Yes. Okay, so that book says, and God said, let us make man our own image and likeness. And when you go into all the scriptures, you find that they all speak about that man is really a divine being. You see that? In the, in the Old Testament, one of the Psalms, it says, the, the author of the Psalms says, Know ye not that ye are gods. Right. You see that? Right. And the same thing is said in the New Testament and so forth, you see? Yes. So, and so the thing is that, you know, we're not human beings. Human being is a failure. It's a source of failure and illness and, and the worst of man to man. Yes, this, uh, it was another thing that, I, you know, I didn't understand. Okay, um, I was you know, understanding that God is in everything. Well, they, that's what I'm talking about. God uh, is within birds you. and, you know, whatever, bees and, you know, all that's that. That's correct. Okay. But God cannot express its divinity. You follow what I'm saying? God cannot express its divinity in the world through a bird. Oh, I, bird I, is, okay, I understand what you're saying. But the, the brain of a bird and the, the physical equipment of a bird is too limited. But God can manifest itself through you if you, you know, uh, fix your temple, your, your spirit, your mind to receive God. Right. Okay? That's Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for calling. Seven two zero, you're on the air. Six to one. Who is it? Hello? 720621? What? 720621. I guess there's, I think they're talking to somebody else. So we'll get them later on. 972898 on the ear. Um, yes. Um, hello, Robin. Uh, I'm in, uh, this is um, Tron, and I just have a question for you or well actually a a a couple of questions if i may sure. um, uh, one is regarding uh reincarnation and mm -hmm. i guess my question regarding that is whether or not 
um, do you reincarnate, like, as the same sex that you were previously, or, like, could a man reincarnate, you know, his or her, well, his, his next life as a female and vice versa? And if so, whether or not that might possibly have anything to do with homosexuality, especially, like, if it's expressed in, like, young, young children? Okay, um, you know, when we go into the various, the, the, one of the, the, the literature that covers that the most are the Kabbalistical literatures, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? And according to those teachings, you know, man, um, you, you know, when you start off on your soul journey, right, you start off already polarized male or female. Are you with me? Yes. Okay? And, you know, so you do not change that. You remain that, okay? And, of course, uh, you know, being male or female is just simply a matter of emphasis of the sex, the, the polarity within you, okay? Now, uh, when it comes to, you know, homosexuality, okay, you find that they are, you know, for example, you know, to men, right? It feels very natural to be intimate with a woman and vice versa. You with me? Yes. Okay. And we find also that, you know, to a, a homosexual person, it feels also, you know, very natural. You with me? To yes. be intimate with somebody of the same sex, same gender. Is that clear? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know. So, um, you know, we are beginning to understand more and more and more today as to what would make, you know, a person, you know, um, you know, feel that way. Okay. In other words, you know, for example, today I was thinking this radio where was saying that um, that our genes, for example, controls or has a major influence even in our the choices of our partners. So there might be something genetic or not, not, not inherited, but something about the biochemistry, right? Because, okay. you know, our sexual orientation and da da da, -da is, 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 you know, is influenced by a whole cocktail of genes uh, on, on hormones and things like that nature. You with me? Yes. So the whole thing, or to try to explain homosexuality or whatever from the perspective of, you know, um, reincarnation or perspective of genetics or, you know, hormones or whatever, is still something that is very much, you know, in the air. Okay. That clear to you? Yes, it is. Okay. So, um, you know, nobody really has a, you know, direct answer about that. Okay. 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 Then uh, my my second question was that um, how much does or will your diet of, um, affect the initiation process? Uh, okay, of course. In other words, if your diet is bad, you know, if yes. your diet is bad, you're going to have, you know, some serious problems, okay, uh, with your energy. Is you with me? Yes, I am. Okay, so you have to really make sure that not only your diet, but, you know, certain exercises that you are involved in, okay, um, you know, it's supporting, you know, what you're doing. Okay? Okay. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Okay, um, I'm going to take a few questions later on, okay, so at the meantime I will, you know, just simply, you know, talk a little bit more about what we are, you know, what this initiation program, you know, is all about, okay, and uh, first of all, there are 11 parts of the spirit, okay, and we are dealing with each part, you know, of the spirit on a 30-day basis. So we start in February, okay, 
and we are moving through uh, the Amen Party Spirit from February 21 to March the 30th. I'm sorry, to March the uh, 20th. Okay, that's the highest part of the spirit. Okay, and then we move into um, the uh, Osarian part of the spirit from March 21st to April 20th. Okay, we move next to the Tehute part of the spirit from April to May, and you know, along with the sacred part of the spirit as well. Okay, then from May, okay, to June, May 21st to June 20th, we move to the Ma'at and the Heruku, the part of the spirit, and so on. You know, we're moving down the part of the Teru or the tree of life, dealing with each and every part of the spirit. Okay? And um, so, you know, it's very important for us to to understand, okay, that we need to work on each part of the spirit by itself, Okay, and uh, I just want to to just, if you excuse me for a while, you know, my switchboard disappeared on me, so I need to reload. Uh, this is a little bit, you know, strange. I've lost all of my call call ins. And you all hear me? I, will, I, I will, you can't answer me because I need to get back into my switchboard to um, bring you back up. Okay. So just bear with me one second here. We lost the switchboard. So what is coming up, I just want to say that the Amen part of the Spirit is the most important part of initiation. And that's what we start start by, start up with, um, you know, on February the 20th, which starts next Monday, okay? And what we do is that we establish, you know, peace within the Spirit. You see that? Okay? And um, because peace is the you know, the foundation of the spirit. Okay, we are back again. You know, peace is the foundation of our entire life. Okay? Um, you know, when we are first born, the animal part controls our lives with its anger, its fear, its worrying and grief and its emotion and sensualism. And, and it's the oldest, most powerful part, the animal. So the, the foundation, the foundation of the initiation is to begin to weaken and to replace, you know, the, the, the grip that the animal part with its emotion and sensual nature has upon us. You know, until we go through initiation, the animal part controls how we eat, how we mate, you know, how we react to challenges, to difficulties, to losses, you know, it just controls, you know, man's life tremendously. And... You know, and most people don't understand is that, you know, peace is this is the supreme source of spiritual power. People talk about psychic powers and spiritual powers and understanding, and it, that you have to first establish peace. You see that, okay? In order to be joyful, you know, you don't want you know you know to be happy. You have to be able to be peaceful when you are challenged, when you have losses. You don't want to go through life enjoying something when you have it and then being sad when you don't have it. You see that you want to be peaceful, hence joyful at all times, and that's the definition of happiness. But that is the, if you can go through an entire year or two or three, okay, without being sad, not even sad, one single day without being angry or grieving or being afraid, not one single day, then you would have nurtured a tremendous amount of power within your spirit so that, you see, uh, whenever you decide to put your mind to something, it will come through. And that's what we mean by spiritual power. Many people think that spiritual power comes from chanting some mantra or doing, you know, you know certain mystical symbols or whatever. 
I'm not saying that some of these things don't work. They do work. But the foundation of having a good life and even using these things correctly depends on the ability to be peaceful in the midst of challenges. So the main initiation is the first part, and that's what we start with in February the 21st, and that is next Monday. That's why we're having this talk here, okay? And I'd just like to take advantage of this moment here to let you know that, you know, unlike last year when we just gave you the book, okay, and and had a blog talk radio once a month or sometimes twice a month to help you through it, okay, uh, what we're going to do this year is that we're going to have an online course that will cost $20 a month where you can go through, okay, uh, the in, either you can get help through the initiation process, meaning that um, the, the the course will, you know, um, give you much more guidance than, than is in the book. There will be tests that you can take to test your knowledge, and at the end of each month you will get a certificate, you know, letting you know that you have done well, okay, in your understanding of the material. Of course, the, the certificate is not saying that you are living the truth, but that you understand it. And there will also be a means of you tracking your spiritual progress, okay, through the online course. You see that? Meaning that every day, if you want to do it on a daily basis, or every two days you can go and answer certain questions, and, and that's, that's going to be a private site that you will have, your own personal private site where you will get an email feedback. So you can have a, a, a printed out, print out record of, you know, how you're doing with certain changes you're supposed to make in your life. Because keeping score is very important. It's a, the, the part of your spirit, which is where you triumph, the, tri the, 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 the power to triumph over, you know, what is evil or low within you. It's a scorekeeper. <laughs> you understand that? So we have the scorekeeping test, you know, on the program where you can you get a, a daily f feedback if you want or every two days or once a week. It's up to you. You see that? So every month you'll be able to go up there and take your courses, and there will be a guided meditation where we will have the chant and the mantra that you can use to strengthen your approach to, you know, this initiation. You see that, and uh, as opposed to just having to compose your your script all by yourself, you will have an assistance on how to do that, and to work with the script that I put together to help you through it. And we're going to have initiation on two levels: one for level one, those of you who starting the initiation this year, okay, and um, those for you, those of you who are will be starting. You know, um, you know. Uh, I'm sorry. Those of you who, who did it last year will have a level two initiation, which will be much more complex and more in depth, and, and a more a, a stronger program. So, if you did initiation for the better part of last year, you might want to take level two this year, because it will assist you better. To, to do it, to take it to a much higher level as opposed to repeating the same information you did last year, okay? Um, and I will give you information uh, as to, you know, how you can get the, the link to that site, you know, later on in the program, okay? So in the meantime, let us take a few more questions, okay? Let's go to, we have a person here, eight. Eight six zero five zero two. Hi, Shekham. How are you? How you doing? Uh, yes, I actually just had a question, um, and I guess I'm trying to figure out like how um, the initiation ties in with, let's say, uh, Volume One and the Oracle from Volume One, because I was on uh, the Wikipedia page. Uh, that you guys have, that it was talking about um, the the Ra uh, section of initiation, and it covered um, 
you know, like the, it, it, it was a calendar basically, an Altharian uh, calendar. And I was, I guess I was kind of confused when I saw it because um, I was trying to figure out if you, for example, were using your oracle from volume one um, with the different net, net, netters or netarus, uh, if you get a particular reading, would you have to wait for that time of the year and then, uh, I guess, kind of um, incorporate that raw teaching um, that, 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 I guess that's kind of what, Okay. Yeah, first of all, right, our website uh -huh. is, is TawiNetwork.com uh -huh. and Tawi.biz, right? Okay. Whatever else you see on the Internet is unauthorized. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you understand that? I got okay. You. All right. In other words, you know, some students, you know, or some people, you know, they get, you know, they want to be helpful. I, I, I gather and they put stuff, but it's, you know, I, 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 it's my first time hearing that there's something on Wikipedia about our calendar. <laughs> you see, uh, mm -hmm. first of all, the the Ra calendar, the the, the Ra is the part of the title, the part of the spirit, right? Uh -huh. And 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 it's and it's not an initiation per se, okay. Big, you know, because it, it, it's less, you know, less unified in its objective than the Osirian initiation with me. Okay. Okay? Meaning that if you get a reading, you do, mm -hmm. the, you do whatever meditation and ritual you have to do right then on the spot. I see. Yeah. I in see. other words, if, if let's say you, you did a reading on a particular job that you're applying for next week, okay? Mm -hmm. And the reading says, well, you're going to have to strengthen the civic part of you to get that job. You're not going I, to wait till the Serbic cycle three months down the road. Uh -huh. so, you understand that? Now, the calendar is this year. Let's say that, you know, you have a, 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 a art reading for your marriage or, a, you know, a tefute reading for your children, for one of your child, you know, one of your children. And you have, let's say, a, a heru reading for your your destiny. You with me? These are all uh -huh. long-term you know, projects, you know, long-term things in your life, right? Right, so in the, right. In, in the months when those, when those energies are, you know, are, you know, rising, right? Those are the uh -huh. months of the calendar. Those are the months where, you know, uh, you know, whether you have done well or have not done well in your life, things will tend to show up. Okay. Okay, in other words, if, if I have, well, let's say, uh, this, this right now we are in the Heru cycle. So if I have not been doing, and unless I have a heru for my marriage and I have not been doing my, I've been making mistakes in my marriage because I have not been nurturing the heru part of my spirit, then this month I might experience some real, you know, challenges and things going wrong in my life. Oh, okay, I see, I see. You see uh, that? Right, right. Okay. okay. Now I, okay. Right, I so it. I will go to that Wikipedia page and see who put that up there because, and so, but for all of you on this call here, you know, tabby.biz, tabbynetwork.com, okay? Um, that's where, <laughs> that's, that's where you get any kind of, you know, uh, authorized information from these blog talk radios. Okay. Do that. Okay? All right, thank you. Very good. Okay. Um, so I just want to let you know that for we're going to be having uh, two guided initiation, you know, classes, okay? It's going to be $20 a month and to help you through each of the, you know, um, stages of initiation. And it will include, you know, guided meditation with the mantras and everything and, you know, tests and certification, not to certify that you now can initiate other people, but to certify you that you have understood, because there are going to be tests up there that you can then be certified that you understood the information, and also there's going to be another test where you can also track, you know, your progress numerically. Also, there will be attached, for those of you who enroll in classes, there will be a forum where you'll be able to come online and chat, not chat, but, you know, post questions, you know, and have it answered as well as, you know, read the questions and answers from other participants in the system. And uh, for those of you who receive an email from me for this blog talk radio, 
uh, you will receive the link by tomorrow, no later than uh, Wednesday. And for those of you who got to the show, okay, um, but, and did, but, but did not receive an email from me, you want to send an email to N as in Nancy, V as in Victory, M as in Mary, at Nile, that's N as in Nancy, I-L-E, Valley, V A double l e y dot com so that's n v m at nile valley dot com you can send an email requesting okay uh the link to the classes we have not yet finalized you know the the u r l for that um class location it's a, it's a new site that we're setting up and it will be ready no later than Wednesday so that you can go and register for your classes and sign up and so on. And if you don't have a credit card or a debit card, okay, you will be able to send us an email letting us know, and we will provide you with an address where you can send in your money orders, okay, and we will enroll you in the class. So if you don't have a credit card, you know, most of us cut up our credit cards, didn't we? <laughs> we understand that, okay? But it's convenient, but it's also inconvenient, and we understand that, so you can get in touch with us that way, okay? Or you can also always go to our website, uh, TAUI Network, www.TAUI, T-A-U-I, network.com, and you will see, you know, um, and if you click on Distant Learning, by Wednesday, you will see, you know, um, a link that will take you to the site where we're having those classes. Okay, we will go to another caller. Mr. Langston. Peace, brother. You're on the air. Peace, can you hear me? Check him Peace. out. how you doing? Greetings. I'm well, brother. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, in regards to the... Um, revelation you had in regards to the economy in the Western world and it collapsing in the latter part of the uh, two, early 2000s. Um, did you, do you think that it's still going to come to a head and be even more so serious than uh, initially uh, forecast? And if so, is there some kind of hedge we can uh, make or is there some place we should go beyond staying in the U.S. in order to you know, hedge against that when it does come on? Well, the collapse is coming. <laughs> uh, let's put it this way here. Uh, the collapse is coming unless certain things are done. You know? Yes. If people have the insight and the guts to do what needs to be done, the collapse can be averted. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? And, um, but, you know, uh, that is usually not the case. People don't usually have the insight and the guts. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, right. Uh, but there will be no place to run to. Mm. You feel that? Yeah. Okay? And as a matter of fact, as, as God men and God women, we don't run. You see, we, we, we say, we, we, we give thanks to God to these challenges because he gives us the, 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 the general opportunity to nurture our divinity. Mm -hmm. And the bigger the challenge, the greater the spiritual power that we will achieve, uh, you know, that we will get from it. You see that? But yes. you understand that when things go bad, there's always survivors, you see? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, tens of million people died in Europe during World War II, but more than that survived. You with me? Yes. Some survived with their minds intact. Some survived, <laughs> they went crazy right. and very sick. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what will take you through the difficulty is your divinity. Mm. You see? Right. Yeah. If you start to worry and grieve over the losses and and get angry and upset and, you know, start to fight with your wife and, you know, and that kind of stuff. And then uh, that, that's how the, the, the collapse will bother you. You see that? Yes, indeed. You know, no, I say they have the insight and if they had the, the, um, the guts, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I was riding the subways the other day and I saw this ad where HSBC Bank has an ad in the subway saying that point zero, uh, point zero point three percent, mm -hmm. no, no, point zero point three, right, mm -hmm. of the energy, the electricity that can be generated from 
solar energy in the Saharan desert mm -hmm. can supply energy to all of Europe. Right. 0.03, right, of the mm -hmm. energy, solar energy of Saharan desert can power all the energy needs of Europe. Right. And I said to myself, first of all, well, gee, what about the rest of Africa? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, you know, check on the job. Are you finished check on the job? Yes. Yes, check on the job. You know, a lot of people don't know that he was also very much interested in, you know, the the politics and the economics of Africa. And he said that if African nations just, you know, network all their grids, all their energy grids, mm -hmm. they could provide energy for all of Africa, Europe, and the Asian subcontinent, which would be phenomenal revenue for Africa and industrialization for Africa. Right. Okay? Now, mm -hmm. that would help to, to, to relieve a lot of the pressure. You, you with me? Yeah. Okay? Um, you know, now Saudi Arabia, Yemen, all of these places, they have lots of sun, but they will never, they don't have the guts to put solar energy because <laughs> they will compete with the, with the petrodollars. Right. Now, uh, what's true for the Saharan Desert is true for the uh, desert here in Arizona, Vegas, and Colorado. Right. So if, you know, the Americans have the guts and the insight to harness the solar power, forget about wind power, solar energy, those deserts, mm -hmm. right, will yes. provide energy for the United States, Canada, you know, uh, Mexico, and, you know, all the way down to South America. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yes, that will reduce the carbon print to almost zero. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. And, uh, but there are people uh, making uh, money right now selling, you know, gasoline and selling, uh, turning, taking food away from, you know, from people by using corn to, power, to feed cars instead of people. So when people have the, is there collapse coming? It, it looks that way, be, only because people just don't have the guts and the insight. Mm. You know, okay. I, I don't know, there's a wajet reading for the year, and we've seen it already manifesting in, um, in, in, in the Middle East, you know, in, in yeah. Egypt and in Tunisia, Yemen, and so forth, in the Arab countries, right? Yeah. Now that's going to have a big repercussion in America. Mm. You see that? Yeah. Because the people who are going to end up in power, you know, they're going to want a bigger piece of those, the oil profits. They, right. They're just not tired of Hosni, Hosni uh, Mubarak. They're tired of, you know, the, the, the oil being sold and the profits coming to the West instead of their, you know, improving their lifestyle, which means that the price of energy is going to go up like crazy. Right, right. But, but this is what this initiation is about. You see, I'm not doing this initiation in a vacuum. I'm doing this initiation because the winter solstice of 2012, you know, you know, according to the Mayan Aztec calendar, is a very important turn in the history of the world. Hmm. You see that? Yeah. Okay? And the winter solstice is a time when the Osirian consciousness can rise to its highest, okay, into the spirit of man. Mm -hmm. So we foresee that on the 2000, the winter source of 2012, there's going to be several thousands, you know, of all of us out here doing this initiation that will be ready with that consciousness for whatever the world, you know, has to dish out. I got you. You see that? I but if you that. do not, if you're going to react emotionally, you're going to get sick, your IQ is going to drop, your performance ability is going to drop, and you'll be swept away with whatever challenges because there's a book called you know, the party's over, number called Crossing the Rubicon, meaning the party is over. Okay, the, the, the days when Americans of all walks of life, blacks, Chinese, whites, you know, whatever, Republicans, you know, Democrats, you know, we all benefited from the profits made on the back of third world people. You understand that? Yeah. So those days are coming to a close. Mm. <laughs> But a God man says, it's all good. Indeed. Okay. Indeed. All right, sir? Yes. yes. Thank you, brother. Yes, thank okay. You. Thank you for putting the initiation here in, you know, current affairs historical perspective. Yes. Thank you. Okay. 
four four seven seven five. You're on the air. Uh, greetings, Shakem. Uh, greetings, how you doing? I'm well. I'm well. My question is in regards to, uh, I guess, living on a daily basis as we go through the initiation, and especially with the uh, amen portion of the initiation, initiation coming. Um, how do you discern, for instance, if if I have a feeling of anxiety or I get bad news, but I don't express it outwardly, and I say, you know, toi uh, nater, and you know, my my nature is peace. Before, does that mean that I've you know, is it the feeling that I, I want the feeling? I don't want the feeling to affect me, the energy, uh, my spirit to affect me. But at the same time, I'm not letting it express itself outwardly. So, you know. Well, there's, there's a there's a stage. There are stages, right? You start off by saying it, but do you really understand why you're saying it? Are you convinced that that's the truth? Stay with me. Right. Yeah. That are you convinced that you that 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 acting out of anxiety and anger or fear is the wrong thing. Are you convinced about that? Yes. yes. You are? Okay. And I am. Like, I am. Okay, let's say you've been doing that for several months now, and the anxiety is not going away, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, there's no such thing as anxiety. <laughs> what you're suffering is from some energy imbalance. Uh, you see that? So you need to okay. do now some Qigong, some yoga, or maybe stop drinking so much coffee or sugar. But you got to find out what is it that's unbalancing your energy. Okay. Do you understand okay. that? Yes. yes. yes anxiety is just a catchphrase for, you know, different forms of energy imbalances coming from different quarters. Okay. Okay? Okay. Very. That's Thank why you. I have, that's why along with these teachings I have, you know, various Qigong books. So that you can, you know, and then I have a Bazi astrology system where you can put your fingers right away on understanding your energy picture, you know, your energy profile. You see that? Okay. And okay. fix it from on an energy level. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's go to another caller here. 614. One second here. Six one four six two five. You're on the air. Six one four six two five. Hello. Hello. I can hear you. Oh, hotel. Uh, hotel. Mr. Shep. Yes, sir. Uh, I was in a conversation with a person of clergy, and uh, going over the uh, initiation system and and the process and all. And uh, he asked me a very interesting question, of which I hadn't really given much thought to. Uh, he said, well, well, that's all well and good, as well as I could explain it to him. But uh, he asked me, is there a hell? Uh, could you give me some insight on that question? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you go into different religions, you find that some religions have a hell, some don't have a hell. And and they all describe hell in a different way. You, you understand that? You yes. see, like the the, the the Hebrews call hell Gehenian, but it's not the same as the Christian hell. You know. And and for example, what ha according to the Christian, what happened in hell? Right? Uh, you burn eternally if you have done certain things. Right? Well, that, yes. That's a hellish concept of hell. <laughs> it, yeah. it makes God seem very unreasonable to 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 make somebody suffer eternally. You know. So the thing is, when you, the best way to understand hell is to read all about the different religious approaches to understanding about hell, and you will find that different religions have different takes on what happens after life. You're with me? Yeah. And sometimes one gets the sense that, you know, hell, you know, is, is, is a concept, something that's been conceived to scare certain people into uh, behaving themselves spiritually. You know? And it's not quite yeah. working these days, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's not deterring. It's not serving as a deterrent, okay. And you'll find, for example, that in the ancient Egyptian tradition, even though Wallace Budge has a book, Heaven, Hell, and something else like that, a book of that title, there is no hell. You see that in the ancient Egyptian, you know, system, okay. Oh. Um, um, because the ancient Egyptian system, rather than try to 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 to, to uh, scare you into living truth, okay, it 
it gave you a picture of the great benefits of living truth. You with me? Yes. Uh, the, you know, for example, um, there are some people who, you know, believe in reward and punishment in the sense of, you know, um, gratification, reward, and pain, punishment as an incentive or disincentive for people to do what is right. You see that? Yes. Okay. The Egyptian system is not based on, you know, gratification, reward, and punishment, you know, as a means of doing, because those are human, that's a human way of looking at life. All you right. see? Uh, that might work somewhat with children. Children are afraid to be punished, and they, they cannot rise above gratification, especially instant gratification. But as an adult now, you got to understand that, you know, you want to change your self-image from a human into divine self-image. And once you put the divine self-image, you don't need the concept of a hell to motivate you to do what is right. Because now you're looking at, you know, at being one with God and sharing in God's wisdom and power, you see, to move on through life. Yes. And, and when you understand the essence and nature of God, which is love, Okay, when a man or a when a man or woman does wrong, it is ultimately out of ignorance or illness. Oh. You see that? All right. So you are given the chance to redeem yourself. Okay, and redemption yes. comes <clears throat> through love, not through punishment. If 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 you do something wrong and I punish you, what's going to happen is that you're going to de degenerate in your mind. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that, that, that's uh, quite. I'm quite clear on that, and that was my sentiment to a degree. But uh, you know, I I don't like to misinform people as well. You know, well, then, and, like and I said, I, the antidote to that is to research hell across all different cultures, and you find that it's really something that different cultures have conceived for whatever purpose, whatever motivation they have. Yeah, well, because, I, I assume that it was merely. Uh, the concept of a, of a hell, if you will, was more of a, a scare tactic or something to make you be afraid, which is an emotional response in itself. Well, that's the way some cultures use it. You understand that? See, one of the problems is that you know, many, many of us in the Western world are exposed to just simply one culture, <laughs> thinking that that's the only, you know, that's a V word. But there are other religions, all the cultures, and we need to take a look at it. You understand? Know Yes. Okay. All right. Well, you answered my question, and, and thank you, uh, Shekhar Shekhar. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. Are you going to call her from Skycap? You on the air? Is somebody calling in? I don't have your number. I just have ones. <laughs> I'm calling. Get me okay. On. Do you have a question or a comment, sir? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Rahu Never? Yes, sir. Hey, wow, you got me. Hey, I'm, yes, calling from, uh, I'm calling from Los Angeles, California. Okay. Hey, how you doing there? I've called a couple of times. My name is uh, Rick Pierre, and uh, <clears throat> I talked to you a few times. And I'm calling you this time because we're having some challenges out here in California, you know, sometimes getting information, getting it on time. And we had a question because I'm calling on behalf of a few of us. We want us to know about the raw initiation and how that's actually going to be orchestrated, and can we get all the information that's coming out in a timely fashion? Because for some reason or another, we're not up north. We're down southern California. We're not seemingly, seem, seemingly able to get things on time. The other what, thing what I had. Is, you're not ahead. getting on time, and from whom? From Cowie. <laughs> What is it? What is it? You're not getting on time. I'm not. We just recently got the uh, the Bazi reports. We just yeah. got. I just got mine. I, we were we were one of the first ones to actually call in or sign up and get it, and it came late. Mm hmm You know, and we seem to always have a disconnect between New York and Southern California because we call there several times trying to you know either get CDs or books, or whatever it is that you put out, because we've gotten almost everything you put out. And we've been working diligently oh, okay. with Cowie. Okay, so, so do me a favor, right? Send an email to nvm at nilevalley.com, right? Mm -hmm. And reference this situation so that I can look into it. Okay, so is is that 
I've done that before, you know, send emails to well, Andy, Okay, uh, so send it to my attention. Okay, send it to your attention. And state that I said it on the blog talk radio so I can look into that. Okay. okay. Okay, I appreciate that. Now, the other thing about the raw initiation part, um, because we're this is our second year now. Well, and, we, uh, first of all, this is a Serbian initiation, not a raw initiation. Correct, correct. But um, I remember when you um, came on before, you said you would talk about that. That's why I thought maybe you would be talking about some of the raw initiation this evening. Well, no. When I when I'm going to talk about our initiation, I send out a I will send out a blog talk, you mm -hmm. know, uh, announcement, you know, uh, referencing the Ra initiation. Okay. okay? Today we're doing a Syrian initiation, which starts next week, uh -huh. right? Uh huh. And I want to make sure that everybody gets off to that and is comfortable with it before we introduce the Ra material, because uh, you we will find that handling both of them. Will be could be a handful. Correct. That's for that's for incoming people or just people in general. Well, uh, well, I can't I cannot separate that. Once I put information out there, everybody's going to come. Correct. <laughs> so I have to make sure that I present it in such a fashion where they can handle it. Okay. Okay. So uh, when that comes out, and you said that's going to start pretty shortly, uh, we'll be able to get that in Southern California, just as everybody else around the world is getting it. Well, I, I don't perceive, I have a lot of people in Southern California who are mm -hmm. not experiencing what problems you're saying, because That's first of all, hard. the, the Basi material, right, is about, uh -huh. is about um, I would say, what, three weeks old now since we yeah, first... Yeah, I have it now. Yeah, I've got, I've got the Basi yeah. report, i got the Basi profile, Everything you guys put yeah, we, out. We, we sent out an email letting people know that we were having some problems with our um, Tawi network site. I didn't and many that. of the people understood that because our server the people, was down for about 14 days. Okay. okay. And then everybody to this right now are caught up. Then they've been caught up in the past 10 days already. Oh, okay. Well, we didn't get that email out here. But I'm um, simply saying that was with the bad What else were you having problems with? Well, if, if we go back to last year, sometimes when we would try to get your books or CDs, there was a disconnect. Either we didn't get it or it would come late. Or When I say late, if we ordered it this week, it would come two or three weeks later, maybe longer than that. And we would have to make calls several times over and over. And I put people's names down that I've called and asked. And mm -hmm. they're like, well, how come you didn't get it? Or, you know, I have to send it again, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't know if there was a – I didn't know what was going on. So I was well, on uh, well, I, I, I apologize for that, and I'm sure that, you know, we have had some challenges here and there, but your experience has not been the experience of most people. Hmm. Okay, so yeah. you, but I know it's not a Southern California thing. We don't just Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying we've been having some challenges yeah. out here. But anyhow, you know, send me an email, you know, to my attention. I will look into it, whatever you're having problems with, and we will see how we can correct that. Okay, and we can me. make that attention to you. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, okay. Okay. All right, Mark. All right. Area code two one four five hundred. You're on the air. Greetings, um, Shakem Shakem. Greetings. How you doing? Great, great, great. Appreciate everything you do. I have a question pertaining to meditation. Go ahead, and sir. And my que my question is pertaining to the healing sounds. Is it best to do them before you meditate or after? Well, the healing, you talk about the Qigong healing sounds, correct? Yes, sir. Well, the healing sounds is a meditation itself. Okay? Got you. So it doesn't matter whether you combine it later on with other meditations in the same session or you're, you're saying that. Okay? Got but each, each healing sound, you know, uh, corresponds to a particular energy channel, cha uh, channel and certain behaviors. You with me? So if you're working this on the liver healing sound to overcome anger or the, to strengthen your ability to make decisions, you know, or you want to work on the healing sounds of, of the liver in order to address, you know, um, you know, blood circulation issues or tightness in the body or whatever, okay, you may not want to combine that with other meditations that, let's say, uh, involve, let's say, um, certain things that are not compatible with what, you know, that mindset. You're with me? Gotcha. You want to keep things like within the same kind of, you know, program. You okay. see? Okay. Now, what the meditation just, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. 
the meditation that's going to be conducted through the initiation, is it okay to do the Qui-Gon healing sounds after or before? To do what? The, which what healing? The, can you do the healing sounds with the initiation before or after? Exactly. Exactly. I would say if you want to do the, if you want to combine your Qigong meditations with the initiation, I would suggest that you do it before. Thank you. Because the, you know, when you do the healing sounds, they, they purify the, the energy channels. They, they, they remove you know, toxins out of the energy channels. You with me? And relaxes mm -hmm. you and you can, you know, and it'll help you to remove negative emotions and thoughts and things out of the, out of the energy, out of the organ systems to make it easier and better for you now when you begin to do the initiation work. Do you see that? Thank you very much. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Very good. So, you know, here's a gentleman who's taken the initiative to bring in the Qigong material into the Osirian initiation. And, of course, you know, spirituality is about you, you know, um, acquiring. You have a basic program, but then you have all these auxiliary you know, resources that is up to you according to your time, energy, and understanding to combine. Okay? Uh, 310766, you're on the air. Uh, how you doing, Mr. Amen? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I wanted to get your input. Uh, I asked the Oracle a question about my initiation process. And I asked it, what do I need to do to be successful in my initiation? Good question. And it came up, I'm Huh? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, and I and the and the answer was Amen to Maat and Amen Tim to Kas. So I wanted your input on that. Mm -hmm. And as far as the meditation scripts, I had a concern with myself is because I know it's a lot of meditation involved, and I have a problem with my visualization. It's like mm -hmm. when I meditate. I really have a difficult time in actually visualizing things, and I know that that's an important part of the initiation, and as well as trying to implement the, uh, the Sesh Matut Natir and, and all those images. So my question in that area was, is there anything that I can do to help me uh, visualize better in my meditations? Okay. Um, I'm glad you asked the question, you know. Um, for those of you who have learned how to do oracle readings, okay, you know, you can bring your oracle readings into your initiation. You're with me. Um, now, you ask the question, what's the most important thing you must focus on for initiation? You got amen, amen, you see? Which means yeah. that the initiation has go through all the netero, you see that? But what, the, what God is telling you through this oracle reading is that you need to pay most, the greatest attention this year is to the Amen part of your spirit. You with me? Okay. Now, we all have to pay attention to that, but to you, it's more critical. You should also do a reading on your, your, your destiny while you're here. If you're married, do a reading on your marriage. And then uh, let's say if you have a, um, you know, a hetero reading for your career, for example, when you get to the hetero, you know, stage initiation, you might also want to make sure you focus on career issues. You with me? Okay. Yeah. If you Actually, have a roof for to. your, you know, uh, for your your marriage, for example, when you get the Heru stage of initiation, make sure you put, you know, your marriage, you know, issues into initiation and focus on, on them as well as the other life issues. Okay. And uh, so, and those of you, for people who do not, you know, cannot do readings. We are going to advertise a, a service. We're trying to put the 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 resources together where people can receive readings and over the telephone and and get some insight into the readings. We're trying to make it cost effective for everybody. So we'll announce that you know later on. Um, yeah. Visualization during the meditations, you know, if you're having problems visualizing, it's because when you're doing the visualizations, you are not yet deep enough in the meditation state. Your brain is not calmed down enough. You with me? I got Okay? You. It could be that you're not doing the breathing the right way, or it could be that maybe you have, you know, uh, a kidney yang problem so that you're not able to grasp the breath the deep breath well enough when you, you know, 
your, your, your brain so it's not fertile. Uh, and that is why we're having a guided initiation program this year where I'm going to provide the, the actual meditation, guided meditation with the chants and the mantras, and that will assist people, you know, to strengthen their meditations. You with me? Yes. Okay? Okay, so, so I have to focus more on establishing peace. That's the point of the reading. And then for your visualization, you have to make sure that you're either doing the breathing correctly or, you know, um, maybe meditating longer, doing the breathing part of the meditation longer before you try to do the visualization to make sure that you are in the, that alpha mind, you know, brainwave state. Okay? I have a – okay. Well, I appreciate your input on that. Very good, sir. Seven seven three five zero seven. You're on the air. One second here. Seven seven three five zero seven. You're on the air. Yes. Peace and blessings, Shekham and Shekham. Peace and blessing. This is Second Mate Ari from the Chicago branch of the Sarah Set Society. Calling. Yes. And I just wanted to. Um, announced that here in for people living in the Chicago area, we're on the south side, and we will be augmenting your online classes with an initiation study group and monthly meditations. And I heard the uh, young man mention um, issues with meditating, so we will have group meditations available to initiates who are interested in that kind of support live. Very good. So you want to give a, an email address where they can contact you? Yes. Or a phone number where they can contact the Chicago community? Yes. The number would be 773-643-1340. Again, it's 773-643-1340. And this will be starting March 14th on Very good. Saturday. Okay. So they, they can call so to get more secondary. details. Thank you very much. Yes, they can. All right. Thank you. Okay, that's the Shechem who's in charge right now um, for the Queen Malden, Chicago, running the Sada Set. And they will be assisting you. And we will be uh, letting you know of places around the United States and other parts Canada, England, and Bermuda, and Trinidad, and different parts of the United States. We'll send you emails soon where you can also supplement your online initiation program by, you know, study groups, you know, in your localities. 514-484, you're on the air. Yes, uh, good evening, uh, Shikem or Shikem. Good evening. Yeah, I'm, call yeah, I'm calling from Montreal, Canada. Uh, a quick question. I'm just curious to know if the, uh, the five elements that are, you know, earth, uh, metal, fire, uh, wood, and the, the, uh, the other one, the, uh, uh, yeah, yeah Earth, no. metal, fi fire, wood, and the, um, I I'm just missing one there. Water. The five elements and their polar. Sorry? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah and water, their polarity. Wood, fire, water, wood, fire, earth, and metal. That's it. Yeah. Here we go. So, yeah, and their polarity, based on the principle of yin-yang, Mm -hmm. equaling 10, and if yeah. we add to that the uh, Wuji, that uh, would make 11, is there a correlation between, the, uh, you know, that, uh, th these uh, 11 components and uh, the 11 the, uh, spheres of the tree of life? Well, Am I wrong? Is it legitimate on my part to see correlations there? Uh, there's, a, there's a correlation depending on how you look at it. Right? Okay, because I'm looking at yeah. it from uh, the science of energy management perspective. Yeah, the correlation is that, you know, um, the, the, the pattern of 11 repeats itself many uh, many other places. Okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but this, what, uh, now, Wuji would tie into Amen, you see? That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And you find that Yin, Earth, will tie in, you know, to Osher. Okay, right. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but then uh, when you go down the tree, you're going to find difficulties correlating the different elements and the polarities of spheres of the tree of life. 
So, so okay. it's better to just simply say, you know, uh, keep it very simple that the pattern of 11 repeats itself mm -hmm. in many places in nature. Oh, sure. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Indeed, indeed. And uh, one last thing. Uh, do you still uh, look forward to uh, to write that book on uh, the 11 years cycles, you know, of the sun there? Oh, yes. I'm still, you know, <laughs> I have it in my queue. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to it. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Trying to get to most of you here. 301. 385, you're on the air. 301-385, you're on the air. Okay, we'll come back to that caller later on. 718-945-44, you're on the air. Um, hit up, shakum, shakum. Yes, sir, how you doing? Okay, I want to ask a question about the Bazi Astrology Personality Profile. Well, you can do that tomorrow. We're going to be talking about Bazi tomorrow. Oh, okay, okay. And they'll be, ta they'll be, t they'll be taking a, a course over there at uh, 626 Flatbush, right? That's correct. There will be classes at 6 to 6 Flatbush, and we're going to be announcing those, those classes soon, as well as, you know, uh, a few intensive for the, to assist people with the initiation as well. Okay, great, great, great. So I'll save it for tomorrow. See you then. Very good. Take care. Okay. 4473, I'm sorry, 443373 on the air. Uh, good evening. Good evening. I'm calling. I'm trying to. What is the difference between the current initiation um, that you started last year and the initiation program that you had in your Volume 2? Okay, the initiation in Volume 2 is, is the outline of the stages of the initiation. You with me? Yeah. All right? Hello? Okay. Okay, in other yeah, words. I'm still here. Yeah, and uh, to, to let you know the stages and things that nature. Now, in, in uh, the Volume 4, okay, goes through the Osarian initiation itself, okay, the, the, the okay. schedule, okay, following okay. What, what, what an astrologist called, you know, the, 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 the equinoctial, you know, points, the cardinal points, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. that calendar, that so-called astrological calendar that makes, you know, let's say March, you know, uh, 21st, okay, mm -hmm. you know, um, supposedly equal Aries, zero degrees of Aries, whatever. It's called, it's really the cardinal, you know, uh, calendar. And it's the Osarian okay. initiation calendar that Hipparchus, the, the Greek astrologer, mistook as the basis for astrology. When is the basis for initiation? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And the other, um, the other question I had was around, with, with the, now, I have my own oracle, I have my own oracle card, and I do um, cycle readings. How can I integrate my cycle readings into my initiation? Well, okay, when you say you do, that, you do a reading on, on, on if like, I do a reading, if I do reading, uh, if I do a reading every, you know, every lunar cycle, uh, okay. is that something that I should take into account as initiation? Is that something completely separate? Well, if you do a reading, like okay, you know, a particular lunar cycle, it is bringing to attention things that you need to be mindful of, right? Work on. Oh, okay. You right, and you can work that into yeah. your into your initiation material. Okay. okay? Yeah, I, right. I suspect that all much. of you are going to find different strokes and different ways of doing this, and that's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, this is getting very creative. I, I know it will. I know it will. <laughs> okay. Let us go on and see if we have more people with questions. All right. Uh, so let's. Okay, let's see this person here that we miss. Three three zero seven eight eight. You're on the air. Three three zero seven eight eight. You're on the air. Okay, I guess that person stepped away from the phone. Okay, so let us, you know, while we are waiting for more people to um, click one on the um, the keypad to ask questions or give comments, I just want to say once more again that the initiation, you know, 
um, that we are doing is a step-by-step -step cultivation of 11 parts of the spirit. And it goes beyond just simply reading a book, studying a book, okay? But it's a certain process where you med meditate on certain laws. And, you know, we meditate on laws because, you know, laws governs energy. You see that? And the energy of our, our life force, our spirit, is what controls the way we think. It controls the things that happen in our life, okay? Whether we're successful, sick, healthy, or whatever, is a spirit. But the spirit has to be controlled through the laws. And initiation is a means of you, you know, learning the laws and implanting the laws into the mind so that the thoughts in that mind, based on the 11 laws, can therefore control your life force to bring you harmony, success, and well-being, and so on. Okay? Um, if you are planning to do initiation, you're going to need Medunatir Volume 4. Medunatir Volume 4. And you need to go to, um, to www.tawinetwork, T-A-U-I network.com, or to Tawi dot biz, T-A-U-I dot B-I-Z, to purchase, you know, a copy of the book. That's what you'll be needing for initiation. If you want assistance for initiation to get the best out of it, okay, this year we are providing guidance, okay? Um, you know, we're having, uh, you know, um, online monthly, you know, courses. Each month you can, you know, subscribe to the stage of initiation for $20 a month, and you will get, you know, um, instructions beyond what is in the book. You will get access to tests and, and a certificate, you know, uh, so that you know that you have understood the material. Okay, there will be a, a way also of tracking your progress, and best of all, there will be a guided meditation. Last year, those of you who did it were doing the meditation on your own. This time you will have a chant guiding your breathing and seeding your mind with, you know, uh, the proper information, and, <clears throat> and as well as the mantras of the Australian mantra to take your consciousness deeper into that part of the spirit. Um, you will also have access to a forum where you can... Um, you know, post questions and get answers, as well as read the questions and answers uh, by other students. Because you know, when you know, you're not going to you know think of everything. And when somebody is thinks of something that you need to know and, and it's there, it's going to be very helpful to you. Um, and we're going to be having two set of online classes. You know, the one would be for le one would be a level two class, which will be much more involved and complex, okay, than the class we did last year. And those that's classes for those who did initiation last year. You see, uh, so that you can take it to a higher level, okay. It's going to be much more challenging and demanding, and it's going to be a level one class for those of you who are starting initiation this year, or maybe if you did it last year and you didn't do too much of it and you think that you need to just simply repeat, you know, the first level, then you might take that class as well. There's no need to do both classes, though. One or the other, you will get, you know, what you need from it. As a matter of fact, um, ultimately is what you bring to the initiation that will make the difference, you see. Um, you know, tomorrow we are going to be covering, you know, uh, Bazi from the perspective of Chinese medical astrology. This is the year of the rabbit. Last year was the year of the tiger. And you've heard, you know, these things being said, the year of the goat, the year of the dog, the year of the rat, the snake, the dragon, and stuff like that. And what you need to know is that these animal designations of, you know, year are really meaningless. They have no meaning. I see many people make the mistake, they write books and try to make, they try to use the animals as, as metaphors for people's personalities 
you know, and it is not correct. It's not it's not real Chinese astrology. And, you know, all the Chinese astrologers, the experts, the real experts will tell you this, okay? Um, you know, uh, the, the, the rabbit is just simply, you know, you know, represents the what we call the yin wood, the yin aspect of the energy flowing through the liver, gallbladder, and meridian. You see that? Last year was the tiger, which is the yang aspect of the the the, the, the wood, the same energy flowing through, but, you know, the, the, the opposite polarity. Next year will be the dragon, okay, which is, you know, an earth energy. You're with me? A young earth energy flowing through the spleen, stomach, meridian. So when you have a Bazi chart and you know all the different elements that are how they're configured in your life force and how what part of your life those energies are governed, meaning that you might have a tiger energy governing, meaning a, a, a young, you know, wood governing, let's say, your, your, your wealth. And you may have, let's say, um, a young fire governing, let's say, your rank and status in society and so forth, okay? Um, I'm just throwing things out there. Um, so if you have these, that way you will know what element is governing what part of your life so that if it's not going well, through Qigong and healing sound meditations, you can reconfigure, you can manipulate those energies, tone them up, push them up. You can take certain herbs and foods to help assist you so that you will not suffer too much stress, too much taxation on your system. Meaning that if <clears throat> if wood governs your wealth and you find that you have to put out too much of that wood element, that liver meridian energy to achieve financial stability in your life, you know, then that's that's an indication of what will cause illness within you. So that's how a Bazi astrology chart can help you, you know, as a as a health diagnostic tool. Because the whole concept of Bazi astrology is for you to manage the energy to manage your life. In the Western world, we manage our life directly. You know, if you have wealth problems, you take a course on wealth building. You know, not understanding that you have wealth problems because the energy that governs your wealth is not functioning like it should. So you lack the talent. You lack the opportunity. So you got to fix the energy to fix the part of your life, you know, as well. So that's what we'll be dealing with tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Come back to this site here, and we will be dealing with that, okay? If you uh, do not have a Bazi chart, you can come to Tawi Network, www.tauinetwork.com, and order your astrology chart. You can also get a 2011 report where you get a monthly, month-by-month -month picture of what are the kind of things that will tend to happen in your life this year. Very powerful tools so that you can prepare for difficulties and prepare for opportunities. Nothing like preparation, isn't it? So that's tomorrow. And um, and we'll also be sending you a link, okay, for our, so they can know where to come and register for our online initiation classes. And if you did not receive a notice, direct notice from us about tonight's blog talk radio so you're not on our list, send me an email to nvm at nilevalley.com so that we can put you on our mailing list and send you the link for the, you know, initiation uh, classes, okay, as well as other classes that we will be starting this year. Okay, let's see if there are any other questions. Let me try this number once more again. Three three zero seven eight eight. You're on the air. Hello. Okay, maybe it's sound like a child. That's good. It's starting young to listen to our talk. <laughs> okay, let's go to another caller. David, you're on the air. Hi, Shechem. How you doing? Good, good. How are you? 
I'm fine, thank you. Good. I have a, uh, just when you first uh, started your um, talk, you, you spoke of two books. One was called The Great Liberation, and the other one was The Book of Gates. This, uh, one was the, no, the one, uh, the talk, well, I, I mentioned three books. One is The Great Liberation okay. by Arthur Avalon and Serpent Power. And then there was the, I spoke about the Fesh and Duat or the Book of Gates. Who was the author of the Book of Gates? Well, uh, some priest in ancient Egypt some <laughs> five, six thousand <laughs> years ago. Well, actually, the, the book is reproduced, you know, by Wallace Budge. Wallace Budge? Right. In one of his books on the Egyptian gods or whatever, he has excerpts from the book in, his, in, in, in one of his books. Okay. And the Great Liberation, again, was by? Arthur Avalon. Or I think, or Sir John Woodruff, one of those two names, whatever, right? But go to Amazon and put in Serpent Power, okay? And okay. the Great Liberation, and uh, and they deal with the Kundalini Yoga uh, tradition. You know, they're phenomenal reference books. You know, okay. a lot of details. It's, it's, it's a book. Those are books for real serious students of the science. If you did the time trial, say don't waste your money. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Two oh two four nine, you're on the air. Two zero two four nine, you're on the air. Okay, a person hung up. Okay, we are coming down to the end of our show. We have about two minutes remaining, so this is the last opportunity for anybody who wants to ask a question, press 1 on your um, keypad so that we know that you want to ask a question so that we can acknowledge you. Let me see here. I don't know this person. Did we acknowledge this person before? Seven three two seven three two three hundred. You on the air? Hello. Just not. Okay, we have a minute and a half to go. So I want to thank all of you <clears throat> who joined us this evening. And if you uh, like tonight's program, make sure that you click on the button to mark this, you know, one of your favorite shows, okay, so that uh, Blog Talk Radio can be notified that uh, we have lots of listeners that are very much, you know, um, enjoying, you know, the service that they are providing. <clears throat> and um, don't forget to come in tomorrow at 7.30 where we're going to be discussing Ba Zi, uh, which is Chinese medical, astrology, uh, Chinese uh, astrological medical perspective. You see that. It's going to be a very interesting show because many people, you know, need to know that there is an astrology system that's quite superior to the Western system. <clears throat> I've studied all kinds of astrologies, and I'm just totally mind blown with what the Chinese have done with the subject. So I want to thank all of you for coming on the show. Peace and blessings to all of you.